Spider-Man ranking is finally up today. Hey guys, Harry Thomas here and welcome back to another ranking. Now that I've reviewed all six uh, Spider-Man movies, uh, I thought uh, now is the perfect time to rank uh, all uh, six of uh, the movies uh, starring our favourite web swinging hero, Spidey himself. Now, this is going to be a uh, very controversial uh, list. Uh, there are going to be some choices where uh, some of you may disagree, but this is my ranking and my opinion, of course, and uh, I'd love to hear your ranking uh, also. So without further ado, I'll start with my least favourite and work my way up to my favourite. At number six, at the very bottom, you all saw this one coming, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, sorry, The Amazing Shit 2. Rest in peace, Spider-Man. This thing that actually thinks it's a movie but it's not can go fuck itself. The positives are non-existent. There is nothing to like about this movie. All of the performances, with the exception of Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy, are ass. Andrew Garfield is a fucking terrible Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. Uh, the villains fucking suck, all three of them. They are the worst uh, antagonists uh, ever put to film. Uh, yeah, literally. Electro hates Spider-Man for forgetting his fucking name. The effect uh, look uh, uh, completely abominable. Uh, it is the shittiest CGI uh, I've ever seen in my life. But there's no story. It's uh, a bunch of uh, fucking, uh, well, uh, subplots that are uh, never tied together. And this movie does not exist uh, to actually uh, be a good movie. It exists to... Uh, will uh, give you uh, the worst torture you've ever had and to set up future fucking pointless uh, cinematic universe movies that uh, weren't even thought of yet. And uh, the uh, movie is uh, so agonizingly and excruciatingly painful to sit through. It's, uh, it's one of the biggest war fests uh, the, of a movie. The action is uh, absolute shit and there's hardly uh, any of it. Uh, the uh, product placement is completely uh, pointless and bollocks. Uh, never have I seen more product placement in a fucking movie and uh, they actually killed off the only good character in these movies. Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy. What the Fucker, you just uh, made their great romance that we thought would, was building up to something great lead to absolutely nothing. And uh, that, that, that is literally uh, one of the single worst endings I've ever seen to any story, period. I was fucking done uh, with this movie after that. I could not take another millisecond of it. And the fucking ending uh, with the Spider-Man versus the Rhino is never resolved. Let it burn in the depths of fucking hell and burn every fucking copy of the DVD if you get a chance. Uh, this is not only by far the worst of the six Spider-Man movies, it is the worst superhero movie ever made. It makes Batman and Robin fan stick and even Superman 4 quest for shit all look good. And it's one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my entire life. I hate this movie with a burning passion. Number five, my second least favourite is, oddly enough, uh, The Amazing Shit 2's predecessor, The Amazing Spider-Man, or the not-so-amazing Spider-Man. Uh, how do people uh, like this reboot? Uh, I'm sorry, but... Uh, uh, screw the people who say it's better than Sam Raimi trilogy. It's not, so fuck no. Uh, this uh, is uh, one of the worst reboots of all time. Uh, just uh, why the fuck does it exist? Uh, Sony only made it uh, to uh, steal our money. Uh, there was no point to it. We just wanted Spider-Man 4. And you don't reboot uh, Spider-Man only five freaking years after the original trilogy. That's far too soon. And uh, just, this is basically Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man, only done bad. Uh, just, uh, Andrew Garfield is the worst uh, Spider-Man we've ever gotten easily. 
the only Gerza character is Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. So annoying that we have to go through the whole origin story again. Uh, it's uh, There's nothing new or original here. The CGI it all uh, looks so crappy. It's uh, a complete bore from start to finish. Uh, the lizard is a awful villain. He has no motivation. He just wants to turn everyone into fucking lizards in New York. Uh, yeah, it's that fucking stupid. And... Uh, just uh, Mark Webb should be known as the man who fucking destroyed Spizey. Uh, so please, guys, skip both amazing shit movies. But thank. Valia, those are the only two uh, bad Spider-Man movies, and uh, now let's get to the good ones, the ones we want to talk about. That's uh, number four. Oh dear, this is not going to be a very popular opinion. Oh boy, uh, uh, at number four, uh, the latest Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man Homecoming. And let the hate comments come at me for ranking it this low. But I am not going to apologise for saying this. I think this movie's good. I enjoyed it. But I do think it's a kind of overrated. I would say it's probably the most overrated movie of the year thus far. It's just a, a passable Spider-Man movie. A... A, a good enough second reboot, but not much else. I mean, Tom Holland is a fantastic uh, Peter Parker slash Spidey, worthy follow-up to Tobey Maguire, and uh, I do enjoy uh, Marissa Tommy as a younger Aunt May. Uh, they uh, shared some uh, heartfelt scenes together, and uh, I uh, do love that this movie focuses more on the high school aspects, uh, way more than the other movies did, and thank God it's uh, through the whole origin story as the window, and uh, it's uh, the funnest Spider-Man movie uh, since uh, Spider-Man 3, its light-hearted tone uh, helps it excel in the humour department, it's just... Uh, the movie, in, ter in terms of problems, this movie definitely has more flaws, I think, than the critics and audiences uh, are, are saying. I mean, the movie just has the lack of heart and intense uh, gripping moments that the Sam Raimi trilogy has. And I loved uh, Michael Keaton's performance as the Vulture. However, his character is so cliche and boring and uh, he's... His robotic suit looks so bland and generic. And uh, Liz is an okay, uh, well, a new love interest uh, for Peter, but she uh, doesn't come close to uh, Mary Jane or Gwen Stacy. And the twist with her, uh, we uh, uh, could see it coming uh, from a mile away because the trailers uh, freaking spoiled it. The trailers showed way too much. Uh, just like the Amazing Spider-Man trailers did, and this is just another, you know, uh, MCU movie that's connected in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that has to uh, needlessly set up uh, future installments. Uh, why couldn't it be a standalone Spidey story? And why the hell was Iron Man in this movie? This was not Tony Stark's story. Uh, he was only there to connect uh, this movie uh, to other installments and for fan service. Uh, though I do want to apologise uh, to uh, uh, both Matthew Movies and Jeremy Jones. As, as Matthew Movies pointed out, uh, he uh, thought I was being a bit dismissive when I uh, well called Jeremy Jones a Marvel fanboy for preferring this movie to Wonder Woman. And I do apologise, that is just Jeremy Jones' opinion. So I accept that many will disagree with me. The only two that do agree with me so far are Rachel Wanger and Ollie Pajak. But uh, I think Homecoming is just a good Spider-Man movie, but not a great one. So it's come to this. We're halfway through the ranking in the top three. At number three, the very first Spider-Man movie. That started it all back 15 years ago in 2002. Spider-Man. This is a classic uh, Spider-tastic superhero movie. Uh, get it? Spider-tastic. Uh, that word fits this movie perfectly. Just uh, nobody believed that Spider-Man could possibly uh, work on the big screen, but Sam Raimi is the only director that could ever make Spider-Man work, and uh, he uh, brought it to life uh, better than anybody else ever could. He uh, just... Uh, made the comic book uh, come to life, he honours the character. Tobey Maguire, uh, I ignore the naysayers, he is the best piece of Parker slash Spider-Man we have ever gotten, and uh, I was so sad when he had uh, quit, and uh, I love Kirsten Dunst as uh, Mary Jane, she's the best love interest uh, in all six Spider-Man movies, and uh, 
James Franco as Harry Osborn are just uh, perfectly cast as well. Yeah, everybody's perfectly cast, in fact. It's just, uh, I love this Uncle Ben and Aunt May way more than the ones in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. And Uncle Ben's death is... Uh, done uh, so powerfully here and his words with great power comes great responsibility is such a uh, phenomenal and great message and Peter's coming of age uh, story is expertly executed. The Green Goblin is a fantastic antagonist, such a great role for William Defoe to play, and uh, J.K. Simmons as Mr. Jameson, pure perfect casting. Gobby Pitches as Spider-Man! That's uh, something the Amazing Spider-Man movies lacked, uh, just uh, the visuals uh, may look uh, slightly dated compared to this movie's sequels, but uh, they still uh, hold up uh, just enough for me. And Danny Elfman has composed an epic and iconic theme. Uh, the first hour is uh, the origin story only thankfully done right, and uh, the second half is a uh, badass movie. Uh, it's uh, just so much fun, as well as being brutal, especially in uh, the uh, amazing climax, and it's perfectly paced. Uh, yeah, uh, there's no problems with Sam Raimi's original Spider-Man movie. Even if it's the weakest of his trilogy, it's uh, still brilliant. At number two, uh, the uh, outstanding sequel, uh, Spider-Man 2. This is a excellent uh, superhero movie and sequel in its own right. It's one of the best uh, movie sequels uh, of all time, and as well as one of the greatest superhero movies of all time, period. It's uh, just ups everything, and from the first movie, just uh, Tobey Maguire's top freaking notch uh, here, he giving one of the best performances of his career. You feel so sorry for Peter. He is at his lowest low, struggling to balance his life, uh, as Peter, as well as being Spider-Man, and uh, you've uh, got uh, the uh, drama with uh, him and Mary Jane. Uh, she's getting married to Mr. Jameson's son. Uh, that's a compelling uh, love story. It's so relieving when they finally get together, and Harry Osborn's character arc properly starts here as he goes on his revenge quest. Uh, Doc Ock kicks ass as a villain. I even love his wife, played by Donna Murphy, and Mr. Jameson gets an awesome laugh. <laughs> You serious? The effects and the action scenes will blow your mind. Some of the best moments of the trilogy uh, are in here, like when Peter confesses to Aunt May what really happened to Uncle Ben, to Peter saving the girl from the burning building, to Peter giving up being Spider-Man. Wow, and did I mention how uh, astonishingly mind-blowing the awesome the train scene is? And thankfully, this is one of the only Spider-Man movies not to conclude with a funeral scene. It would be number one, if not for my uh, very... Uh, controversial favourite. And number one, my personal favourite Spider-Man movie, this is uh, gonna be an opinion that completely makes the world itself a shaker, but uh, my favourite is Spider-Man 3. I know you're all uh, gasping right now and, um, and are confused. Harry, uh, why the fuck do you prefer Spider-Man 3 to Spider-Man 2? Uh, well, uh, Here's why. I think Spider-Man 3 is an underrated uh, masterpiece. It's uh, just a pure, perfect superhero movie in general, and the best possible conclusion to the Sam Raimi trilogy. It's, uh, I think, has the best writing, best action scenes, best character moments. Uh, it's the most ambitious Spider-Man movie, and the black suit was such a interesting concept of the... Uh, three villains are my favourite villains in the series. You've got their motivation. The fact that Peter had to forgive Sandman for accidentally killing Uncle Ben concluded Uncle Ben's story well, uh, really thought provokingly. And I, I love Sandman, Venom, and New Goblin. And, and uh, Harry's death is probably the most emotional death scene in the trilogy. And uh, Gwen Stacy actually did serve a purpose, I think, as uh, she was uh, Venom's motivation. It's the darkest Spider-Man movie. There's always something going on. It does not have too much going on, uh, regardless of what others may say. And uh, the movie's message that revenge is wrong and we have to forgive each other, despite everything that's happened, uh, is a... A uh, brilliant message that the movie deserves a great deal of praise for. So, Spider-Man 3, I am uh, not uh, afraid to admit, is up there with The Dark Knight Rises and Wonder Woman 
one of my favourite superhero movies of all time, as well as, in my opinion, the best of the six Spider-Man movies ten years later. As you can all tell by my ranking, I love the Sam Raimi trilogy, I have fun nostalgic memories of it, adore it, but I hate both amazing Spider-Man movies, they meant left me livid, but I enjoyed Homecoming. Well, I love you guys, thank you for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this ranking, and what's your ranking? Please comment, let me know, please like this video and subscribe, and please follow on Twitter and on Google+, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys! <laughs>